Hello friends, I hope you are well, Techman Pat here. Today we are exploring a new addition to the Hoarder server right behind me. If you haven't had the chance to see the actual build of this server and the review, then check out the links below. Today we're adding a networking addition. Thanks to FS for sending me this switch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little overview of this beauty right here, tell you all about it, and of course we're gonna chuck it in the server and see how how that fits because I've got some really big plans for using this server with a bunch of other network devices. So big thanks to FS for sending me this and sponsoring this video. Let's get started by rolling the intro. All right, let's start with an unboxing. This is the S326-8T 2FB. It's the eight port gigabit ethernet L2 plus PoE plus switch with eight X PoE ports at 240 watts. It also has two times one gigabit SFP uplinks and it does support ERPS, which we'll talk about it in a second. It is from a company called FS, you can check out the links below to fs.com or simply type it in. So let's get unboxing. Obviously these guys make a whole bunch of network switches, that's why they got in touch. Obviously this channel's been doing a lot of networking and so we're gonna have a bit of an interesting look at one of their products and they do have many. And you know what I've noticed? A lot of them are in stock which is actually quite unique to some products here in Australia. Obviously, let's start with power over ethernet. That is probably, I guess, the most important feature, and that is the ability to give power on basically one of the R J45 plugs and basically one of the cables inside. It's a good way to power things like uh, cameras or even other devices that require a little bit more power. Uh, and it's increasingly used for VoIP mainly. So if you've got a little phone that sits on your desk, generally speaking, it's powered by the ethernet switch. And for 240 volts, it does mean it can power most things. And it can also power wireless access points, which is the main use case I've seen. And it's probably going to be the use case that I will want to use it for. So on the back, we've got a three pin. Uh, obviously this means you can um, power it with most three pin plugs, just like you do in your computer. And it does have a grounding thing. So when this gets connected to a server or puts inside, we can put an actual little grounding cable and connect it up to here and make sure it's, it's as safe as possible because we don't want any interference. Now, on the other side, um, we've got the actual ports and one of those ports is, oh, actually two of those ports are an SFP port and these are the ones right here. We'll just take off that nice little rubber cover. Um, we'll start with those because I think they're actually quite interesting. So, um, in the telecommunication industry, the actual SFD ports can be found in a variety of network devices. So it's not necessarily for very cheap devices or expensive devices. And they usually have two, maybe sometimes more, but generally speaking, I've, I've just seen two, maybe because I haven't really seen the more expensive ones. Now the, that SFD port on the network switch is designed to use with small form factor connectors. It is very different than um, the, the these ones, of course. So obviously you, you're not gonna be connecting, but there's a little pins just inside. I'm not sure if you can see that um, they're ju just here uh, maybe you can see that if I just sort of angle it there they're just there now the switches here can of course go from uh, 10 100 and 1000 megabits a second again these are gigabit switches and over here the SFP are also gigabit switches now what is an SFP port well the SFP port on the network switch is designed for use with small form factor SFF connectors and they offer high speed and physical compactness rather than obviously the larger ones now the SFP port enables a gigabit gigabit switch to allow optical or copper links by inserting the corresponding SFP module. So if it's a fiber one, you insert the fiber one. And regardless of the, if it's optical port or electrical port link, the only difference is the physical layer. When the SFP port is inserted into this one gigabit link uh, with, let's say, electrical port, the network cables, let's say CAT5, CAT6, CAT7, must be used for data transmission. Whereas when the SF port is plugged in, the gigabyte SFP with optical optical port fiber jumpers need to be supported fiber connections. Therefore, the RJ45 module is generally used for short range uplinks to connect between all SFP 
distribution switches and all copper edge switches. And of course, the fiber SFP module is most commonly used with high speed fiber uplink over longer distances. So in the case of this device at 259 American dollars, what you're looking at is a fantastic solution for a small to maybe even medium business, especially when you have, let's say, eight IP cameras and you want a very fast link and uplink to them. And of course, if you have phones and you want to have a fast and uplink both for copper and fiber, this is a very interesting switch. Now we've got our console port right here. Now the last thing that's very interesting about this is the ERPS support, which is actually the ethernet ring protection switching. And it's there to, well, it's there to boost your network. One of the things it does is it standardizes the approach to network design. It also enables large amounts of ethernet traffic to flow through to multiple connection ports with high level redundancy. There are several ways to implement ring network topographies, but with Ethernet, um, let's say ITU, I think TG8032 or something like that is the gold standard. Now, when used correctly, and this is the important part, when it is used correctly, the G8032 management protects Ethernet traffic and maintains recovery times under 50 milliseconds. That's pretty impressive. And the concept behind this design is, is actually pretty simple. Network nodes are connected in rings or closed loops and subsequent rings are connected to each other by joining two nodes from each. Now this redundancy is what enables the fast network recovery when any single port fails. Now ring constructs alone aren't actually enough to stabilize networking as the designers prone to looping, but without protocols to prevent it, any data packet could circle a ring endlessly and eat precious bandwidth. So the fact that this supports ERPS is actually really impressive. And again, at this price point, big props to FS. There, That's a really good thing. Now, so how do we stop the looping? Well, this protocol G8032 actually prevents the looping by actively managing said traffic. Now, when everything is working nominally, the protocol blocks traffic on a single ring link to prevent looping. And then if a node fails, well, the protocol reroutes traffic, opening the closed links as needed, keeping all the data flowing. And when the failed node is restored, the protocol automatically closes